there are a lot of monsters, and I love monsters. I would argue that monsters helped define D&D, because if you were a player, like, even growing up when I played D&D, you know, I read the player's handbook over and over again, but the, the monster manual is literally just a, you move from page to page, and it's adventure of adventure potential. Mm -hmm. You see these amazing drawings, you see these crazy descriptions. Uh, tell me about these new monsters that are included in the book. No, that's exactly right. The The monster manual was what first got me into D&D. Before I played any games, I had that book, and I just read through it for all the pictures and the lore about different creatures. You know, I was I was obsessed with cryptozoology and mythological beasts as a kid, and so it was just an easy ascension for me to, to start reading that and get obsessed. Um, and this, it was trying to, uh, to find creatures uh, that fit within this new realm of, of Wild Mountain, Exandria, that fit within its, its topography, that fit within its cultures, that fit within the, the dangers and uh, kind of residual challenges from the Calamity that happened in Jorhas, which was where the final battle of the Calamity took place at the end of the Age of Arcanum. Uh, and so in this we have a number of new uh, fiendish entities that have since taken root since those final battles and now are the natural denizens of the, the broken wastes of Jorhas that include like the Udak, which is this four-armed, hulking, gorilla-like demon beast that just kind of hunts the waste for what it can find or scavenge. And some of which have been uh, bent to become large warfare or beasts of burden for the Korean dynasty on that side of the continent. We go into like this Wavain Basilisk, which is a, a, a serpentine sea creature that uh, it's got its name from the fact that it excretes an oil that can turn things to stone, which is part of its means of eating whatever it can wrap itself around. So a variation on the classic basilisk, but more for nautical adventures or things that are, you know, ocean centric. Mm. Um, we have uh, a bunch of creatures that are based in some of these older uh, societies and civilizations during the Age of Arcanum that have vanished over time. So in some of these deep buried ruins, uh, specifically in the northern realm of Isilcross, in the biting north region of the continent, where one of these great floating cities uh, crashed into the frozen Northland. Uh, elements left over, experiments, great terrible arcane experiments from the society still remain, uh, living off of their final conditioning and programming before their creators vanished, and as such, become a huge challenge and barrier for anyone who wishes to reap the rewards from what can still be scavenged from those ruins. Um, all manner of creatures in that realm and beyond. Uh, some you'll recognize from Campaign 2, and some are custom created for the world, you know, that we've expanded upon in this book. Pre-order now on dndbeyond.com and receive exclusive bonus content with everything that you need to start your own adventure.